Morning guys, probably nobody's gonna be watching live, but uh, I'm gonna be doing this live and it'll be saved for 24 hours for you guys to view. Um, my first patient of the day, well actually, let me introduce myself. Hey, I'm Barry, I'm your CRNA for the day here at Dr. Miami's office, you know that. Um, my first patient of the day is a mommy makeover. Um, she does not mind if I put her face on. Um, uh, I'm gonna do something I almost never get a chance to do, and that is I'm gonna show you guys live in real time a full induction uh, of a patient going to sleep. And you're gonna get to see her, and I'm gonna ask her a couple questions before we do that. Uh, anyway, she's in the operating room on the table right now. Um, all of her monitors are hooked up. Let me show you that. Okay, so blood pressure cuff is on the right arm. I've got her EKG on her shoulders and chest. I've already started her IV and I've got her pulse ox in place. Now during surgery, I will rotate this like this um, so that we don't get any kind of entrapment um, or injury to the ulnar nerve here. But right now we'll just let it you know, sit there. I've got my fluid warmer here set up and ready to go. And as you guys have seen a million times, I set my airway equipment up the same way every time. Okay, so um, what I do now is generally I set my table up the same way. I put my um, induction agents here, my laryngoscope over here. On uh, this side of the head, I have my airway and tongue blade. And then on the patient's chest, I put the endotracheal tube and um, I'm gonna lube that as soon as I have another hand. Um, hey guys, thanks for joining me. Uh, Zach Coleman, Kay Lilo, Blake Widenhouse, all you guys, thanks for joining me this morning. Appreciate it. Um, so anyway, I, I gave the patient five milligrams of ketamine and um, uh, tell everybody what five milligrams of ketamine feels like. What did you just tell me? My tongue feels funny. Your tongue feels funny. What about your body? Uh huh. Are things moving? And do you no. see any funny colors no, or anything? I don't see like that? Funny color. Kind of weird. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't see any funny colors. Okay. All right. I'd try and make it count backwards from like a hundred, but I don't think you're gonna do that. I don't think I can make it. <laughs> anyway, so uh, we're getting ready to go here. Um, Arash. Uh, good morning, Marie. How are you feeling? Okay, very good. And there's Aresh, our videographer, coming to you, fresh Aresh. You got it, bro. Let's do this. Here we go. All right, so I'm going to get some gloves on before we get going here. If you have any, you know, crazy questions, it's hard for me to answer now because I need to be focused on this. However, uh, if you send me a DM or something like that that I can respond to, I will do it. You guys probably know that. All right, so I'm gonna set up my, my ventilator over here. I'm gonna give her a tidal volume of about 700, a rate of about eight, and I'm gonna give her a little physiologic peep at six centimeters of water pressure. Get my O2 flowing 100%, and I'm gonna tweak in just a little bit of gas, okay? So. I guess we're ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Now, as you're going to notice, guys, I do not pre-oxygenate my patients. Why, you're probably asking? Because that's like rule number one. Well, in this setting, I have young, healthy patients that have no coexisting disease. She's an ASA 1. And the trauma, believe it or not, of that mass coming over their face, because I don't use a lot of sedatives and drugs preoperatively, is significant. And people hate that. Uh, I hate that feeling when I've had surgery, so I don't do it. Now, if she were 70 years old, she had cardiac disease and all kinds of other coexisting diseases, I would certainly um, use the cost-benefit ratio uh, and, and you know give her oxygen preoperatively, but she doesn't need it, okay? Now, I will expect a little bit of a dip in the pulse oximeter. I'm not worried about that. Again, she's young and healthy, okay? So. Everybody that follows me should know why I'm putting lube on here. Because that's how I roll. All right, let's get serious. 
Alright. So start taking some nice big deep breaths in and out for me. Okay? As we see, <coughs> this is the sleeping medicine. So as it goes in, you're going to feel one sensation in your hand and you're going to get a funny taste in your mouth. Okay? Alright, so based on her height and weight, I'm going to give her 160 milligrams of propofol and 50 milligrams of uh, lidocaine. As soon as she goes to sleep, then what I'll do is I'll check her lid reflex. Meanwhile, I'll just rotate her head back. And as you can see, she's going, going. Big deep breath there, a yawn probably. And believe it or not, that yawn generally tells you they're gone. The yawn equals gone. So, all pharyngeal airway. And now, I'll see if I have a good airway. I do. I'll give her a couple of breaths here, and then I'm gonna give her the Zemuron. Okay. Yes, when you're working by yourself, things are different. There goes 40 milligrams of Zemuron. That's a neuromuscular blocking agent. Okay. Now you may see her arm move, and um, you may not. Okay, she's got a good airway. If you notice, I'm making that C formation to control. I'm rotating her head back, and I'm using my pinky over here to get it to the angle of the jaw to get a nice open airway. Nice sniffing position. Now that dose of uh, Rocky Ronium is going to take about a minute, maybe a little bit more. To paralyze her and what you won't be able to appreciate that I will is that um, the resistance in her chest when I ventilate her gets lighter and lighter as the neuromuscular blocking agent takes effect so you don't have to watch the clock when you become practiced at this stuff and you'll develop that feel for yourself trust me you will now uh, rest of your show if you look over here on the very bottom, you know that's the entitled CO2 that only comes from the lungs, so you can see that she's ventilated nice and easy. Our vital signs are great here. She never did have a drop in her pulse oximeter. That means she's got good myocardial and pulmonary reserve. Okay, so I can actually feel her starting to get a little bit more loose. We're just about ready. Again, you guys are seeing this as I'm doing it. I never get a chance to do this, it's kind of cool. I wish I could answer questions for y'all as I'm doing this, but it's just not really feasible. Okay, so I think we're ready. So I'm gonna keep my, uh, my circuit very close, like right here. Pull our airway out, rotate her head. I use my stomach, kind of, to help Keep her head in place. My fingers in the corner of the jaw, scissoring motion. That way we get a good sublux. See how her jaw opens up quite nicely there? I'm gonna drop the blade down gently. You see my fingers? I'm just, I'm not even using any, you know, um, kind of pulling motion. I'm going this way towards the left foot and, and uh, toes. And I'll show you what I'm looking at. There's the, you see that black hole? There you go, that's the airway. All right? So very gingerly, I'm just gonna place this bad boy right in there, in like Flint, pull that out. Now you see the lips are not damaged, the teeth are not damaged. I'm gonna pull this back to about 22, 21 centimeters for her height, inflate my pilot balloon, and hook up my circuit. There you go, just like that. You can see the condensation on the tube right here. That tells you we're in. That's a clue. We've got symmetrical chest rise, but the golden rule is right here. We got positive end title, nice vital signs. That's it. All right, so um, guys, hope you enjoyed that. Um, please send me DMs with lots of questions. I expect there'll be a lot. Take care. Beautiful.